Hey, recently telescopes are very much in news, right? You know that. 25th of October, we often used telescopes to watch the solar eclipse and we even did that on our channel. By the way, the video is there on the channel, you can watch it. So, today we have a question related to all the telescopes. Can telescopes see the invisible? Looks like a kind of vague question, no? Let me make this question clear to you. See, whatever telescopes we have, at least the normal ones, they are called as optical telescopes because they have combination of lenses and mirrors and they all work in the visible spectrum of light. What is the visible spectrum of light? Something, the rays or the radiation which our eyes can see. But that's not the only radiation we have, right? So, optical telescopes work on the visible radiation of light. Very good. Now, the thing is, all the stars and galaxies which are far away from us, whatever visible spectrum they are emitting, these telescopes can detect that and show us an image. And that's how simply they work. But, so that's why they can see only visible light. But that's not the only radiation these stars and far off galaxies are emitting. There's much, much more than that. So if I tell you, they are emitting a spectrum which is much larger than this small visible spectrum. So if you think our eyes can only see 0.0035% of the total radiation coming from the sun, our sun, Paros wala sun, Kevalu se 0.0035% ka radiation dek sakte hai, which is a very small part of this whole big radiation coming out, no? How do we see the other radiations then? Kaise dekhenge usko? It's a very valid question, right? And that's why we have this question. The invisible radiation from the sun, how to watch it? But what invisible radiation? What else do we have? Yes, we have gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet rays, and this is the visible spectrum, which we all can see. Then we have infrared, microwaves, radio waves. And as you move from that side to this side, the Frequency decreases and the wavelength increases. Now, there is one small thing which at least we can all agree upon. They go, as the wavelength increases, the scattering decreases. Means, we all have seen, no, traffic lights may, red light, uh, for example, you might have seen in, on tall buildings, we have a red colored bulb. Why? So that red colors scatters the least in the visible spectrum. So, at least very far off places may, it will be Scattering hota nahi hai, light pahunt jati hai. That's why we use red color because it has lesser scattering or I would say least scattering in the visible spectrum. Jaise jaise wavelength increase hoti hai. As the wavelength increases, scattering decreases. Means the frequency or the, uh, the ray, the light ray can reach far off places without scattering in between. Okay, fine. Is this thing clear? Very good. Okay. So, this is what the complete electromagnetic spectrum looks like and all these are coming from the stars to us, but we are seeing only this small visible spectrum. All right, so let's just collate all the points. Most stars emit these different radiations. At times, the visible radiation is not able to reach us, and that's why we cannot see the star with our eyes. This brings us back to the question we started from seeing the invisible. Do we have telescopes which can detect these radiations apart from the visible ones? Yes, we have. Let's look at a few of them. We use telescopes that can detect these invisible radiations and Chandra X-ray telescope is one of them. It is orbiting the Earth, which means you can say it is outside Earth's atmosphere. And we all remember this, no? There you go. It was visible and as you increase the wavelength, it was on this side, infrared, microwave, radio wave. As you go on that side where the wavelength decreases, it was gamma rays, X-rays, right? So, X-ray is something which Chandra telescope is detecting. So, it's important that it is outside Earth's atmosphere. By X-ray, it will scatter scatter. Correct? Why? Its wavelength wavelength is less. It's very big. It means it will scatter more. If you keep this on the surface of the Earth, Difficulty hogi na? Kyu? Earth's atmosphere se scattering bad jayega. The scattering will happen more if you are on the surface of the Earth because of the atmospheric, right? So that's why it is outside Earth, it is orbiting the Earth and it detects X-ray. Who launched it? Launched by NASA in 1999. It detects far away hot stars because hot stars are emitting a lot of X-ray radiations. Okay, very good. Now, Next one, this one is something we call as 
GMRT, Giant Meter Wave Radio Telescope. Now, this radio word is something which tells you it detects radio waves. Achha, radio waves ke side mein aata tha. On which side of the spectrum was the radio waves? It was on the right side, or I would say red, infrared, correct, microwave and radio wave. So radio wave has very long wavelengths. They scatter the least and that's why it being on the surface of the earth, it's kind of fine. By radio wave kya hai? scatter kam karega. Earth tak pohon sakta hai. hai na? Raste mein aise scatter nahi hoga. Very good. So, and if you look at this, it looks like many dish antennas, no? You're right. It is 30 dishes spread over a distance of 25 kilometers. It's in Pune. Feel good about it, no? So, it can detect objects which are obstructed from view by space dust. Space may scattering as it How is it possible for light to get scattered in space because of space dust? You need something to scatter it, no? So that's why space dust can scatter light, but radio waves get the least amount of scattering and that's why they can reach the surface of the Earth and GMRT can detect it. Very good. The next one is, I would say, the most popular one in recent times. Sabne naam suna hai iska. The James Webb Telescope. Can you guess which wavelength? It's, it's on a Lagrange's point, no? Which wavelength does a James Webb Telescope detect? Yes, you're right. It is the infrared. It is the James Webb Space Telescope 2022, we launched it, right? It detects the infrared telescope, I mean infrared wavelength and in, this is a telescope which detects infrared wavelength. Very good, very good. It is outside Earth's atmosphere. It's a Langerhans point, no? Very good, nice. It can detect very far away galaxies. This is the best telescope till now we have ever made. Yes, it's working. It's sending us great and beautiful images. It is helping us to understand how the world or the universe works, giving us images of far off galaxies. Right now, it is, it is sending the images to you, right? Very good. So, all these telescopes are kind of seeing the invisible. And that's why this metaphorical statement makes sense. How can you see the invisible? Using these telescopes, they are trying to see invisible spectrum of light so that they can give, me, they can give you images which your eyes cannot see, right? So, based on this, I would say I have one more small question for you. This is the Hubble telescope. Which radiation can Hubble telescope detect? And by the way, on optical telescopes, we have already done a session. The history of telescopes. Make sure you watch it if you want to understand how optical telescopes work. This session is already there on the channel. Just type out on Google, history of telescopes by Jews, you will get it. All right. So people, if you liked this interesting information, make sure you like this session. All right. It's important because the team works so hard for you. And you share it with your friend because knowledge is best when you share it. Nice. All right, and subscribe to the channel for more such interesting informations and you know what, academically, I would say, extra curricular wise, we do everything on this channel. And you are missing a lot if you are not a subscriber. So please make sure you subscribe to the channel and see you later in another action-packed, fun-filled session. Take care. Bye-bye.